So while we were fighting it out, I um, quickly applied to different schools as fast as I could. And a friend of mine, my best friend, had always talked about journalism and filmmaking. And I know nothing about these careers, but the, but the, um, their uh, deadlines hadn't passed, so I submitted, I submitted my CV and I got um, an interview with a journalism school in Toronto. And luckily for me, um, I had a science degree and they didn't have enough students. All, you know, all their students that they accepted had BAs and I convinced them that they needed someone with a science background to write um, for their newspapers because people had to understand science in order to write it. You know, I just failed to mention that I didn't understand science myself, right? But it was enough for him to be really impressed with me and he, he accepted my application and suddenly I was in journalism school with never having written a stitch of, you know, writing for a media event. But it became very clear to me that I, I had sort of this creative drive inside of me because suddenly I started excelling at writing and being really creative and I was, um, I started winning awards for my work in journalism school and once I got out of journalism school the Gulf War had broken out and they were looking for Muslims um, to work in the newsroom so I started working my way up at, at the CBC um, ironically enough as a journalist um, when I started to feel that it wasn't it was it was a fun career but it wasn't creative enough for me and I wondered how one breaks into filmmaking because there's no one you know if you go to, there's only sort of one way to become a doctor which is you go to medical school you become a doctor but in filmmaking and television there's sort of no one route and you don't even have to go to filmmaking school, and I've never been to filmmaking school. Um, so I took a summer workshop at the Ontario College of Art, and they had a five-minute um, uh, filmmaking course. So I took the five-minute filmmaking course, and I made a film called Barbecue Muslims, and it was based on the Oklahoma bombing. Do you remember that, 1995, was it? <laughs> so a year after I got married, Mesa was one years old. This is my daughter, Mesa, and I, by the way. Wave. <laughs> She was only one, and um, I thought, you know, and, and by then I was sort of protected from my mother because I had been married, and my and my husband was very supportive of my career because my mother was hoping that I would get married, and, I, and he, my husband, would banish all these crazy notions and just make me housewife finally and settle down and, and stop wandering the earth. But he was quite supportive, and he said, "No, I think you should, you know, you should try to make this film." So I made the five-minute film, and it was a comedy of these two Muslim brothers who were sleeping one night, and the barbecue blows up in their backyard, and they're immediately accused of being Middle Eastern terrorists. This was in 1995, and it turned out that it was a um, it was a, a barbecue resistant front, the terrorist group who was blowing up barbecues because of pollution, and they accidentally blew up a Muslim barbecue, and. And unfortunately for them, no one was paying attention to their cause anymore. They were more concerned with the Muslim terrorists and jailing them. And they were like picketing in front of the jail going, no, no, it's, it's us. You know, pay attention to us. So I thought it would be funny to do a comedy about, you know, the whole take on Muslims terrorists. And so I made it, and I made it in my parents' house, and I used the neighbors and my brother and his friend. It was very amateurish and you know wasn't really technically sound, but I submitted it to the Toronto International Film Festival, which is a very prestigious film festival in Toronto. And the jury watched this, and they told me this later, they just watched it in awe, and they said, you know, there's going to be a lot of filmmakers who will be upset with us, but we're going to accept this film because even though there are so many technically superior films out there that are flawless, and this one is certainly as far from that, she's saying something about a community that's never been said before in a comedic way, and we've never seen this before. And so suddenly, you know, and, and to tell you how you know flaky and scattered I am, I didn't even put my um, address on the application form. So when they accepted the film, they couldn't get a hold of me. They didn't know where I lived because I had left it blank. And so they had to. Luckily for me, my brother, you know, because I moved to Saskatchewan, my brother lived in Ontario. They looked up Nawaz and last name. And they found him and said, "Where does your sister live?" And he contacted me. And so I. So the film actually premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival, and I watched the audience. I could, didn't even know I was a comedy writer at that point. You know, I just had made this film at, uh, at the spur of the moment, and people were laughing. People were laughing, and I thought, my God, you know, I, I think I can do this. And so the way I did, I started cobbling together funding from the Canadian system, put together like a much bigger budget, and made a film called Death Threat. And that was when, you know, with the Salim and the and Salman Rushdie, and it was all about the fatwas of death and writers. So I made a comedy film about a Muslim woman who um, has written a really terrible novel and can't get, get the book published. So she decides to go to the local mosque and upset the imam and upset the Muslim community <laughs> to such a degree that they'll sentence her to death on purpose. She'll, she wants the fatwa, right? And then she does all this to exploit her community. And, they, and they're just trying to pacify her and make her happy and do whatever she wants because they don't understand. So it's a comedy about her exploiting her community to get ahead with her book. And so it made that um, short, and it also premiered the 
two years later at the Toronto International Film Festival. At that point, I knew that I, I had a skill and I could exploit it. People were responding to my films. And then the National Film Board of Canada approached me um, to make a documentary. And I decided to sort of, you know, I was making these comedy films. I wanted um, to change gears a bit because at the time in our mosque, women had prayed behind the men, um, you know, for years without a physical barrier. And then suddenly we had a very conservative imam come who insisted that women should be behind some sort of barrier. And so suddenly things started changing for us, um, for the women. And I, and I started you know, doing research and realized that, that in fact these physical barriers were not part of the original sunnah, that they, had, they were uh, manufactured um, from tradition and patriarchy later on as Islam had spread. And that people were confusing uh, tradition with theology. So I went across the country and started talking to young Muslim men and women about how they felt about this encroaching um, conservatism and patriarchy in mosques. And when I realized that so many women were upset that this was happening in mosques and they were prevented, they were being prevented from um, being a active participants in the community because of these attitudes, um, I made a documentary called Me in the Mosque. And I thought to myself, what would happen if the imams weren't always imported from very conservative cultures? Mm. What would happen if the imam were, imams were born and raised in North America and could relate to their community at the same level as their youth? Would it change the dynamic of the community? And from that idea came Little Mosque in the Prairie where I thought it would be interesting if a Muslim lawyer gave up his career and became, you know, became an imam and tried to run it and what would happen. And then, you know, if, if he was the ally of the women and the young people and the conservative men would find him threatening. And that was sort of the genesis of the idea. So when I pitched it to CBC, they, they told me that at, the, at that time, um, the head of comedy, he was uh, Anton Leo, he was Italian, and he goes, I'm the son of immigrants. And when you started talking, those stories of immigrants started coming back to me. And, you know, right now, Islam and Muslims are in the zeitgeist. And to have someone from the community who belongs to the community wanting to make a show that represented the community appeal to him. And so they were willing to take a chance on me and they developed the project with me. And then, um, you know, when it launched, you know, we got our ratings hit and it was a, it was a surprise for everyone. So that was how um, the project came to be. Okay.